You know it's a long ass speed build when you forget that the, this is the first thing that you actually built. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Sugar Pine Zoo. Oh my god, I remember back when I started the zoo and I couldn't even remember the name and now it's like a second nature to me. I don't know, I love it so much, but of course, welcome home everybody. Sugar Pine is welcoming you all back. And today we have a few different things that we're doing today. Uh, first and foremost, we're doing this little bit of a playground area using Mr. Just Goron's playground set. If you guys haven't already played with this before, definitely do play with it now because it is one of the best blueprints in the game, like by far. So, of course, I wanted to have some more places for the kiddos. And what good would kiddo interactions be? I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Without playground so yes i did want to use just goran's playground set and it's so easy to just get in here and start building something fun so i usually work my way from the top down when it comes to making these so i use like the biggest one at first and then i just build around that and of course i'm changing out all the colors so it matches the color scheme pretty well all around the board excuse me and then here we are just and cap to that and I just basically work my way down just have like nice big sections and whatnot recoloring these is the only qualm qualm yeah that I have with these but besides that it's just so amazing and easy how like relatively simple it is to piece these all together and build something that looks really nice and extremely unique every single time so that's something that I absolutely love about making these nice little like climbing structures these nice little playground structures for all the kids and I figured the Alaska part was the perfect way to do this because I think the next uh, episode coming next I guess would be a doll sheep and reindeer habitat so that's of course coming later down the line uh, I still need to, I haven't even been back in Sugar Pine since we actually ended this episode, so I'll be doing that relatively soon. I hope you guys keep a nice little eye out for that because it's going to be such a fun little exhibit. I don't know, I hope you guys are excited for that, but the main thing that we get into today, and we'll actually talk a lot more about it when we actually get over there, is the aquatic house. Now, yes, I don't have the alligator in here. I just want to say that right off the bat. The alligator is getting its own little episode. It's getting its own little section. I'm gonna treat him really nice and like the beautiful, beautiful, scaly puppy that he is. But for the time being, I really did want to devote kind of like an entire building around the bullfrog and the terrapin because I haven't really built for these guys before. But we'll get there when we get there. Right now, you can see me start to finish up the actual playground set to begin with, just because, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I was so struck in to make this, but I don't know, I'm pretty happy I was because it turned out really good in the end. I really do love making these playgrounds and a big thank you to Just Goron for the original set. And of course, adding some more seating over here. Let's just pretend like, you know, if you stop by the food court right next door, you can see me save right there too. Always save your zoos, please. Uh, yeah, just, it's right next to the food court so the parents can chill there. Anyways, here we go actually making the original structure of this. So, I originally laid down all the terrariums and stuff like that, and I start off with these wonderful little flexi-color, uh, wall sets. So, these were originally made by the wonderful Haribo. If you guys have not seen Haribo and Masula Zoo, definitely go check out his stuff. He does some amazing work. But, of course, Nick took the time to painstakingly make it flexi color and like all across the board so big thank you to the both of those guys over there absolute g's um but yeah so here we are actually making the building now i will admit the exterior it's not really the focal point of this as you can probably tell from the thumbnail <laughs> um so i really really just wanted to build interior uh i know i said in the last episode you will not catch me dead making an interior but guess what I did in this episode kind of made an interior whoops but um it was just really fun because it was more so designing an outdoor space but on the inside I don't know if that makes sense to you guys but it makes complete sense to me so of course just nothing too crazy I want to keep it relatively simple so you can see me start to use all these beautiful timber pieces to really build something up that makes it feel a lot more concrete and, I don't know, just very simple doors and stuff like that. I use, like, garage doors. Let's just pretend, like, you know, on nice days, we'll open it up, and then the whole thing will shift up. Whatever. I don't really know. It's doors. I don't care about doors. Doors are just the pathway to adventure, as one might say. And I use a dry stone over there to really sell 
I don't know, just like the nice naturalness that is this entire exhibit. And one of the things I really wanted to focus on going through this exhibit, or at least making this exhibit in its inception, was to make it a focal point once you get out of the covered bridge, because I definitely want something that will kind of like get your attention from the second you start like halfway through that bridge and making this beautiful big building was the perfect way to achieve that i don't know it's just something really fun to do um and doing some nice big old a-frames over here they're not the best um i'm really bad at roofing guys if you can't tell but i kind of try and do something a little bit more fun with it this time around so i hope you guys enjoy that and i do make smart with it i do include like i duplicated a bunch just to make sure i'm not wasting anything and not wasting any pieces or whatnot just making sure that everything is being used and being used multiple times at that work smarter not harder as they would say and i use two different kinds of roof sets over here i use the wooden planks and i use uh, excuse me i use the metal planks wow i am a tired little bean right now wow but of course, continuing this beautiful red barn kind of exterior throughout the entire facade. And of course, I really did want to just, I don't know, you'll see me do this a lot, just walking through the entire exhibit. Uh, that's something I really want to emphasize really helps when it's working on, like, storytelling things like this. And you can see me, like, start to look at the entire exhibit through the speed build. I do apologize if you get motion sickness really quickly, but you know exactly what you sign up for when you join a little leaf show. So, of course, you can see me start to do the upper part of the building over here. Just making sure that we have all the height that we need before we start to tag along into the interior. I basically have this come off like, you know, like those old Lego house sets where like you could take off the roof and you could play on the inside. Yeah, that's essentially why I kind of modeled this off of, or at least that's how I make the building process for me, at least. Just something easy that you can pop off, pop on, and get right in there and get right and dirty under the hood. Uh... Yeah, that, I could have phrased that better as well. Um, you guys definitely don't come to me for my beautiful, clean mouth. You come to me because I swear like a sailor. And yeah, that's pretty much my vibe. But anyways, doing a lot more work on the roof over there. Making sure everything looks good. Everything looks tight. And of course, I just said screw it. Let's put down some reeds. Let's see how well we can kind of like shape this entire area out to be. And guys... I loved making this, but I also hated it at the exact same time. So of course using a lot of faux pieces in here, the faux roots, faux trees, and everything like that, just making sure that everything felt like a nice little themed exhibit area. And oh my gosh, it came out so well in the end. I hope you guys really do appreciate it. I can't wait for you guys to actually get in the file. I do realize that, you know, I kind of said I would upload the file for the moose exhibit, and then I didn't upload it for them, and then the fox exhibit, but I swear, this this time around I will do it just someone remind me please yell at me leaf I will unsubscribe if you do not upload it that will definitely get me to get a kick in the pants right there but of course well you guys will get that when you get that so hopefully for this episode you'll be able to take a little peek into pine hills no not pine hill that's not my zoo mine is sugar pine zoo oh jeez. Uh, but anyways wow how embarrassing Anyways, you can see me start to do a little bit more of the boardwalk theming over here. I wanted to make it feel like you're going through a nice little wetlands preserve. Whenever I used to live up in Maine, there were some wonderful little wetlands preserves up there that me and my girlfriend, you know, Emily, we would go out for walks and stuff out there. Uh, just, it was such a beautiful place up there, and I don't know. This build kind of made me feel a lot more nostalgic for it than I really have been in the past. And I don't know, just, I don't know, I just really love bringing that little bit of history in. To these little builds and i hope you guys enjoy that but of course continuing that kind of theming throughout the entire exhibit even our little iguanas over there so i do include the lesser antillian iguanas you guys may have noticed they were green iguanas at first i do change those out in a little bit but of course i want to have some aquariums over here as well and koi ponds so I actually used some of my blueprints, not blueprints, my billboards from long ago, uh, back in 1.5 actually. Wow, I have not used these in forever. And I just wanted to build around those and kind of have like these nice aquatic features in here. Because I figured, you know, I already have them. Why not use them? So I definitely do use these guys. And I actually do have all these guys on a drive, like a Google Drive, uh, somewhere. Uh, if you guys are on the Planet Zoo server, I do have those guys already uploaded. 
Uh, if you guys remind me in the comments down below, I will check those out. Um, just remind me to upload them to the actual description itself if you guys do want them. Uh, they're very useful. I love using them. Uh, they're just, you know, your classic aquarium screensavers, but I just, I kind of repurpose them to be nice little, uh, nice little billboards. Speaking of aquariums, oh my gosh, can we talk about that game? So I really do hope you guys enjoyed the last video I put out on Aquarium Designer. Uh, if you guys did enjoy that, hell yeah, I really hope you guys did because it's such a fun little game. I really do love making those little aquariums. It's so fun to build with you guys. Um, like, even building for you guys, it's so fun. But I definitely do recommend getting that game. I'm gonna shill over here as well because that's how much I love this freaking game. So if you guys do want like a nice chill out game, if Planet Zoo is kind of running stale for you, I definitely recommend getting Aquarium Designer. It's such a fun little game. But anyways, the whole tangent I was going on over here was that that game may actually be pretty good for billboards. So I'll definitely look into that for you guys. Um, I'll see what kinds of concepts I can come up with. Let's just pretend like, um, I'm gonna work on that later tonight maybe and get some recordings done and get some billboards maybe done and we'll kind of see how that all turns out because they did contact me over my planet zoo content i reached out to them first which uh, we can say we both reach out to each other but anyways i definitely do hope you guys enjoy that little game but going back to this build over here i did want to emphasize a lot more natural beauty over here and just have it be like this nice little storytelling area and i always you may notice this i always put the roof back on whenever i walk back through it because i do want that full experience as you kind of like shape this building up i guess you could say and i think it really does help a lot when you're building like interiors like this just really i don't know just imagine what it'd be like at the end and kind of find out what's missing from it if that makes sense of course i don't even know if i make sense half the time so i really do hope you guys are able to piece something out from all of that but you can see me definitely start to add a lot more foliage in here and these oh my gosh these murals they were perfect for the interior and i sneak some fish tanks on those as well just to like i don't know just a nice little ways to uh incorporate some more fish in here so of course these guys are from like one of those pre-rendered like aquarium screensavers and I don't know, they're just very, very useful to have when it comes to, like, making these aquariums and stuff. Ooh, wow, I'm sorry about the yawn, guys. I am up very late trying to get all these videos done. Um, right now it's, like, Monday evening. I have a bunch of this stuff, like, I need to get through. And, I yeah, I apologize for being so tired, guys. <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm more than happy to do it for all of you guys. You, you guys are just such a wonderful little community. I love working with all you guys. I don't know, it's just so fun. But anyways, you can see me start to add a lot more foliage in here. So I'll just definitely continuing this theme of, like, the waterfront, the water's edge, and stuff like that. And pretty soon, we actually do the roof. Now, I want to talk about the roof in itself for a little bit. And you can see me actually do the little duck pond over here. I include some ducks in here as well they're gonna actually have their own outdoor section as well uh of course no mana ducks because they require some very very deep water to swim in but for these guys i figured you know what the scenery is perfect as it is oh my god i'm so leapy wow wow uh that took a lot out of me but yeah they're gonna have their own outdoor section in the back I will have like this nice little mountain trail going through, maybe have it go through like some big cat exhibits back there. Who knows? I don't even know at this point, but of course, just doing a lot more theming back here, having this beautiful stone kind of like, you know, make itself known over here. And I do give them a little bit of a house as well, make them nice and happy and cozy. Uh, I'm not sure if I do that in the speed build or not, because as I said before, I do tend to bounce in and out of the speed builds themselves. And sometimes I'm kind of like, you know, sometimes I don't even record some big swaths. But I hope you guys are able to piece it together. I know I'm able to, but, you know, I, I worry about you guys. You, know, you, you guys might get lost without me. You know, if you do get lost, you just reach out to your exit buddy or something. I don't know. I am absolutely losing it right now. I'm way too tired. But anyways, just focusing on making sure that all this is beautiful planted yeah, and get yeah, guys guys don't worry about me i'm just it's very late right now but no we're focusing on getting all this planted stuff looking pretty good as well making sure that all the faux rocks 
are being continuously strewn throughout the exhibit itself, making sure that all the exhibits are very much blended in. Of course, unfortunately, the terrapin does kind of clip through the rocks, but you know, there, we put a million in there, so it doesn't really matter all that much. But here we go, checking out all the animals in here. Wow. And just doing some other stuff. I also do some music rocks as well, because no one else has done any music rocks. Uh, just making sure that these guys are all over, making sure that we fill up the vibes of the entire zoo as well. So I definitely do incorporate a lot more of that North American audio that, you know, Frontier was so gracious to record. It sounds so amazing, guys. I love it so much. But of course, we do some of these music rocks all over the place, making sure that, you know, we, you feel welcome in here. You feel like you're getting that full American immersive experience. You know, you get all that wonderful banjo music. You get all that wonderful Cajun music going through here. Even though this is kind of based in Maine, you know how it goes, guys. But of course, I don't know, it was just really fun to incorporate all that. And I use some of the Arctic music as well. And I actually use some Zoo Tycoon music in here as well. The uh, Taiga, well, the Tundra rock. The Tundra music rock, if you guys remember that piece. I incorporate the song from that one over there. And I also do some of the ambient speakers as well. So in the live portion, which we're getting to pretty soon, you guys will actually be able to hear a little bit of this. I do tend to, like, lower the music and the sound in those little live portions but hopefully you guys will be able to piece that together and also the cover bridge let's talk about the cover bridge so i turn it into a little bit of a gift shop uh just a couple of like gift stands and stuff like that nothing really too crazy but i don't know like all the time up in new hampshire whenever we like make a quick pit stop it of some of these covered bridges some have been retrofitted into like you know trinket stores with like all your classic new hampshire merchandise like sweatshirts hoodies and stuff like that and i really wanted to bring the vibe of that over here to sugar pine and i felt like that was like the perfect thing to do and like a little nice homage to my time up north in northern new england of course and big shout out to all my buddies up in maine up in new hampshire even northern mass you guys are great love you guys so much but anyways, you can see me start to, like, plop a bunch of stuff in here, but I don't really do anything with it, unfortunately. I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling the interior of a gift shop just yet. But I did want to get the pieces down at least, so, you know, when I do eventually feel the need to, I can go always go back and throw this stuff about. As, as Stan says, slap this shit against the wall and see what sticks. You guys know how it goes with him. Uh, I definitely do take that from him as well, or at least I try to. Uh, just really being experimental with your builds. I, don't know, just, I always feel like that's a very important thing to do. Always push the boundaries that you're willing to do yourself because, I don't know, it's just always fun to see what you're able to achieve. And of course over here as well, I did want to include the little mulch trick so you guys may remember that all the way from back in Blackstone Zoo, we actually had an entire outdoor section like that. But unfortunately, once you get to like a certain level of distance, it kind of blurs itself out and it looks like dookie. But the best thing about building interiors is that, you know, there's a roof over it all. So once you like sort of zoom out a certain amount, there's a roof over you anyway. So it actually works out extremely well in the end. And over here, this is my favorite part of this entire build. I want to have a little bit of a roof that makes it feel like you're underwater. And yes, I do throw some lily pads up there. I throw some like the uh, Amazon pads. Excuse me. Wow. Oh my God. I'm losing it right now. But of course, I just wanted to make it feel like you're underwater. Uh, I include a lot more lighting as well. So it, I don't know, just pops at night. And we'll actually pop in at the end over here to see what it actually does look like at night. Just making sure everything like, you know, shapes up nicely over here right now. Um, and I can't remember if I actually do the Antillian Iguana on screen or off screen, but yeah, yeah, I think it comes out pretty well. And I do kind of like, you know, line this up with the faux rocks just because, you know, it felt like it was bright. Uh, just a way to kind of ease your way out of the water and more so into the rest of the quote unquote barn itself. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm even going for anymore, guys. But, I don't know, I love this little entrance area with the terrapin, it feels nice and open. So, maybe you just want to step inside and wait for the rest of your party to arrive. I feel like that's certainly one of the vibes I like to go for over here. 
and of course throwing all this beautiful beautiful foliage everywhere just making sure everything looks nice and pretty that is definitely like my main focus over here i don't know i just really do love how well this all came out but with that being said um yeah we're about to enter the live portion so i do thank you guys for sticking by uh i hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of the speed build here i actually make the actual tank itself uh both the aquarium tank as well as the iguana viewing um nothing too crazy for these guys just relatively simple but with that being said i'll actually see you guys in the live portion see you there all right everyone and i hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of the speed build i do apologize there is some chunks missing look at that little guy run right there he's so excited to see american waters the new visual audio experience so yes i do apologize for some of the missing footage uh i'm not really the best in interiors i will admit i do apologize uh i don't really build like concisely whenever i do interiors but I really do hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. I did this fancy little sign just now. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit of a water effect just to really hammer down like that this is truly about water, if that word didn't give it away. And we are doing this little walkthrough instead of cinematics this time around because it is more of a sort of like storytelling experience. So of course we walk right in and I am such a fool. I forgot to actually set the time to be the right time uh yeah let's go completely at night and of course i will be doing some lighting later down the line for like exterior i feel like that may be our wrap-up episode for the end of like season one of this Ooh, hint hint for later um but of course once you walk right in you just see this beautiful beautiful sight and I don't know, I just really wanted to focus on exhibits and stuff this time around, nothing too crazy. But of course, if we just walk right in here, we get instantly greeted by the Diamondback Terrapin. I really did want to hammer in, like, the American fauna in here. And since we have a lot of American, sort of, aquatic exhibits, this is actually the perfect setup for an aquatic house. So, the Diamondback Terrapin, you can see one right on the log over there. It's nothing crazy, you know how exhibits are, it's really nothing too much. But of course, walking through here, you get this beautiful little boardwalk. I really do love how well this came out. And you get this neat little koi pond over here. And this is just a little billboard, nothing too crazy. I think if you look in the Planet Zoo, Re uh, Planet Zoo Discord and under billboards, you should be able to find the link to this one. I have a full drive, like, completely filled to the brim with those. So if you are interested in those, definitely do check those out. But over here you can see more of the views of the terrapins over here doing their little swimmy swim. I really do love these guys. And of course over here we get the American Bullfrogs. Yes, so these guys are the new little friends that we got with the North America pack. Uh, definitely the stars of the show in this whole area. I really do love how well these guys came out. Like easily some of the best modeling work that Frontier's ever done. And I just hate how models are so amazing for exhibits. But they're always the ones that like, you know you never use so that's a little bit of a shame also over here you guys may be saying leaf why the hell do you have ducks in here and i say because i want to so of course these guys will have some you know areas connected outside there these are mealy's waterfowl pack ducks so if you guys are interested in that mealy has all the links to these guys on their workshop definitely do check them out and you may start to notice the little bit of roof design in here so i did want to make it feel like you are underwater so i have these lily pads up here just the real lily pads i was going to do custom ones but this actually works out so much better but moving on through here you get like this complete immersive experience you get a little glimpse into the bullfrogs right through there and you also get them right through here and you can see them kind of like chilling out i love these guys so much and of course you get a couple fish tanks over here yes i know these guys are like cichlids and south american fish but we're just going to pretend they're north american fish i'm not going to the aquarium just to record a north american fish tank <laughs> i think i'd be kicked out if i did that again at new england aquarium but still nonetheless it's still really nice to have this beautiful immersive experience over here and of course the mural came out so well over here i like I remembered that this piece existed and it actually works out so well over there. And just walking through here, you get to see everything else. We have another fish tank right there. We have more of the bullfrogs right over here. We can still see them swimming and stuff. I really love how well this came out. And just the theming in here, 
it turned out so well and I hope you guys appreciate it and it inspires you guys to get a little bit more involved with theming and like indoor areas soon because it's so fun it's so rewarding too and of course in here we see more frog just doing their little froggy thing and we have the lesser Antillian iguana now this one it's pretty interesting because these guys are a island species and I did want to hammer down the fact that like you know islands are very important to the American culture as well not even culture, like landscape. We can't really see them right there. We got another glimpse into the koi's right there. We got some nice otter statues, even though we don't have any otters in here. But if we do peek in here, yep, there's our little iguana friend right there. I love these guys so much. They're so cool. And of course, we have one last tank over here. Nothing really crazy, just a non-discriminate tank. I love how well it came out, though. It's so beautiful. It just, like, sinks right in perfectly. And, yeah, I don't know, maybe, like, American Paddlefish or something. Maybe Baby Sturgeon. I feel like that might be kind of cool. But, yeah, that is pretty much it for this entire landscape in here. And then you pop right out through the exit. And I really do love how well this area came out. It's, like, it's such a nice little indoor exhibit. But, of course, the plans going forward, I will continue, like, this area over here. I'll have, like, a nice little mountain trek. Um, and over here, hopefully, I'll link it back up with the Arctic area. Maybe next episode we will have some, like, doll sheep or something. Oh yeah, by the way, I meant to show this off too. I kind of did this little playground over here. Big shout out to Just Goron for this amazing set. I love this. I love playing around with this set so much because you always do something different each time. So, like, you know, if you're a little kid, you can, like, I don't know why would you go up that one, but you would climb up here... And then you'd go down the slide, maybe you'd go around again, and then you would, or get stuck under there. But still, it's just a nice little area right next to the picnic area, so if the kids do want to go do their own thing, maybe do a little bit of rock climbing, they have that right there. And the parents can just chill out right here. So, of course, I really do love seeing this whole area come out. I love the Arctic section so much more than, like, you know, literally anything else in my life right now. I will literally fight to the death for this area because it's so beautiful. But, nonetheless, that is pretty much it for this episode. Uh, just doing piece by piece by piece. I'm going to get rid of some of these blueprints while I'm over here. But I do appreciate you guys chilling out with me oh my gosh my mic almost fell down i really do appreciate you guys chilling out with me it's really fun just to build this all with you guys of course the back side of this it's like the homer simpson meme. <laughs> but of course the back side of this isn't the prettiest but i will be fixing that soon enough but nonetheless i really do appreciate you guys stopping by we're gonna end it on our nice little froggy guys over here uh if i can find them there we go yeah so, of course, we're going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.